I've been using these ADS1115 16-bit ADC modules for years, and just looking at the datasheet overall specs, these can operate from 2 volts to 5.5 volts, and the analog inputs can go up to whatever the power supply rail is. So if you're running at 3.3, your analog input can go up to 3.3. If you're running at 5, your analog input can run at 5. It has a built-in voltage reference, so the chip is relatively self-contained. You just give it a decoupling capacitor and any pull-up resistors for things like the I2C bus and an alert output. You can measure four single-ended or two differential inputs per chip. And using just one I2C address configuration pin, you can connect four of these on one bus. So you can get up to 16 single-ended analog inputs on an individual I2C bus. It has a built-in programmable gain amplifier, and it also has a comparator, so you can do things like set it up to generate an alert if the input voltage goes outside a certain range or beyond a certain threshold, so you don't have to continuously monitor the inputs if you're just waiting for the voltage to go above or below certain limits. This chip can communicate at the regular 100 kilohertz I squared C rate or fast mode at 400 kilohertz. And if your I squared C bus supports it, this can communicate up to the high speed 3.4 megahertz I squared C mode. You can also configure the sample rate so you can get up to 860 samples per second. And sometimes I have four of these hooked up on the I squared C bus so I can get a lot of inputs. So I decided to put four of these ADC chips on one board to make it more convenient to get 16 inputs with today's sponsor, PCBWay. Here's four of these chips. Each of the four inputs on each chip go to these headers for a total of 16 inputs and ground pins. There's a connector for a power supply, I squared C pins, and the alert or ready output generated by these chips. Onboard pull up resistors for the I squared C clock data and the alert ready output. The alert pin is open drain, so that one output on each of these chips just gets connected together and they share one pull up, so one or multiple chips can assert that pin. Each input has an RC filter. So 470 ohms and 10 nano. I put these here with these arbitrary values because that would have a low pass filter cutoff of 33.8 kilohertz or an RC time constant of 4.7 microseconds. So for anything I expect to be doing, that should allow signals to pass through relatively unaffected. And it can also help filter any momentary speed bikes, as well as give some current limit protection to the inputs. The I2C address configuration pin on each chip is connected somewhere different, so we have ground, positive supply rail, serial data, or serial clock. I put a resistor jumper here for the one that uses serial data as an address pin, so by default I have that zero ohm jumper installed, but I connected serial data and this chip's address pin along with power and ground on this header just in case I want to intercept this serial data going to this address pin. The datasheet mentions you may need to put some sort of delay buffer to guarantee serial data is in a proper state when the address is going to be decoded. So in case I needed to insert some sort of small circuit here to make that happen, it can be done off board. But in my experimenting, I haven't needed that with using an Arduino Uno. So with this, I should be able to get 16 inputs. And I made this test setup with the Uno having I squared C control of this ADC board, power and ground, so I'm running at five volts. And on this breadboard, I just have a potentiometer going across five volts and ground. And the wiper on the pot is just going to the board with one of the analog inputs. So I can just set this anywhere from ground to positive supply and put a multimeter on and see if the Arduino serial monitor is reporting the voltage I expect. I don't have any precision voltage references that I can use or a multimeter with a lot of digits of precision, 
So just using what I have, I'm going to do that comparison. I have all of these green jumpers here. Each analog input is jumper to ground, except the one that I'm using as a test input. So these should all read near zero volts. And the one that I'm sending the potentiometer voltage into is going to read various voltages. The sketch I'm using is just a modification of one of the sketches in the Adafruit library example sketches. I just modified it to read all 16 inputs across four different device addresses. Going from close to ground all the way up to close to the 5 volt power rail, in just random intervals, all the readings across the scale were very close between the multimeter and the serial monitor. When the multimeter showed 69 millivolts, the serial monitor showed 68.8 millivolts. When I changed the pot to show 1.129 volts, the serial monitor showed 1.1287. When the multimeter showed 2.57 volts, serial monitor showed 2.567 volts. When the multimeter showed 3.765 volts, serial monitor showed 3.761 volts. And when the multimeter was at 4.979 volts, the serial monitor was showing 4.974 volts. So that's definitely accurate enough for anything that I'm looking to do. So as I continue using this and experimenting, I want to try things like making the I2C bus operate at the maximum the Arduino can do with the wire library, making sure I set the sample rate to the maximum and put it in continuous mode. I was only using the single measurement per channel, so it was going slower, but I was only checking slow moving signals right now. So we'll see how this works when I incorporate it into more elaborate projects. 